all you rainbow royalty, I am Ace Explains, and welcome to another video, and today we're going to be talking all about chest binding. So, what is it? Basically, chest binding is where you bind your chest, it is a garment that you put on to make your chest appear flatter. And why use it? A lot of times people use it to lower their gender dysphoria that they feel around their chest, or just dysphoria in general they feel around their chest. Sometimes it can be used for gynecomastia or even cosplaying as well. Who can use them? Anybody can use them, regardless of your age or your gender. As long as you're using it correctly, anybody can use them. And if you are younger, do make sure to take extra precautions when binding as your body is still developing. So how long can you wear binders? Some websites, they say 6 to 8 hours, some say 8 to 10 hours, and some even say 8 to 12 hours, but it seems that the general rule is around 8 hours. And you want to make sure that within the week, if possible, you take a day or two off just to give your chest a break. And if you are feeling any pain before the 8 hour mark, please take it off. I know you might not have reached the mark, but make sure to take it off. And also, when you're first starting out to wear your binder, make sure that you wear it for just a short period of time, maybe even like two hours, and incrementally increase how long you're wearing it, because starting off with eight hours is probably not the best idea as your body's not used to it. So what are the risks with binding? I mean, it can help with dysphoria, but because it can tighten your chest, there are some risks that are involved with it. So it can cause some shortness of breath. And in some more extreme cases, if it's not being worn properly or for too long, people can experience lung or rib damage, which is why you must wear it properly. So what can you not do in the binder? First and foremost, never sleep with a binder on. I know you may want to wear it all the time, but don't sleep with a binder on. When you're sleeping, you're trying to take deep breaths. And if you have a binder on, you're compressing that and not able to actually take deep breaths that your body needs. So please take your binder off before you go to bed. Secondly, never double bind. You can only wear one binder at a time. If you are wearing sports bras, however, you can wear two at a time. Thirdly, don't wear your binder during vigorous exercise. So if you're just walking or something like that, that's all right. Just make sure to listen to your body. But if you're doing something such as weightlifting that I do, don't wear your binder as you need to take deep breaths to help fuel your body. And a binder would restrict that. So make sure you do not wear it when doing vigorous exercise. And lastly, don't swim in your regular binder. If you want to have a swimming binder, there are swimming binders available, and you can also just get a size up from your regular binder, and that also works for a swimming binder. So what should your binder feel like? It should feel snug, comfortable, and breathable. It should not feel overly tight like it is restricting you, but it should also not feel so loose that it feels like it's doing nothing, so it still should compress the chest while feeling comfortable. If you feel any pain, have any bruising, redness, swelling, if you're having trouble breathing, lightheadedness, dizziness, chest tightness, tingling in the arms or the fingers, or if there's soreness after not wearing the binder for a couple days, then I would say consider wearing your binder either less or consider getting a size up as those symptoms are telling you that something is not right. So when should you clean your binder? If it's possible, you should be cleaning your binder after every use. So for a lot of you, that may be every day. And when you're cleaning it, you want to make sure that you are either using a delicate setting if you're using a machine, or what is more recommended is hand washing and then air drying it, which is what I do. So what size should I get? So sizing depends on the measurement of your chest. So consult the chart, sizing chart, for whichever place you are getting your binder. 
and if you are between two sizes, please do the larger size. I know you might be tempted to do the smaller size, but please do a larger size because it is going to be more safe for you and it is still going to get the job done. So where can I get a binder? So GC2B and Underworks are the most popular places to get binders, and they make binders with flattening the chest in mind. However, there are some places online like Amazon that you can find some chest binders, but if you are going to get them from those places, please make sure to read the reviews and just do a little more research because those may not be as safe. So how does one put the binder on? So there are two ways to do it. And the first way is to put it on like a tank top and just do it over your head. And then another way is to step into it and then pull it up onto your body. So it just depends on personal preference which way you want to do it. For me personally, I like doing it over the head because it seems easier to me, but it just depends on the person. And also I would say that if possible, have somebody nearby when you first put on the binder for like the first two or three times because sometimes the binder can be a lot more tight when you first get it, because it's not broken in. So it can be hard to get it over the head or just up onto your body. Does binding make your chest smaller? Unfortunately, it does not. However, it does help to just flatten or reduce the appearance of the chest on the body. And please remember that a binder is not going to make your chest completely flat. Generally what it does is it makes it look smaller, or for some places like GC2B, it tries to make your chest look more like pecs. So do not expect a completely flat chest. So how do I bind without a binder? Well, something that I said before was the sports bras. You can wear one or even two at a time, compression bras. There is such thing as trans tape. And then also you can just wear looser shirts to make it look like you don't have a chest. And never, ever, 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 ever use duct tape or ace bandages or anything of that sort to bind your chest because that is extremely dangerous and they are not made to bind your chest. That can cause damage to your lungs and your ribs and you do not want that. You want to make sure that you're binding properly to keep yourself safe and also to make yourself comfortable. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. I may be making a part two to this video if there are enough questions. And if you have any suggestions for videos I should make in the future, please leave them down below. And happy Pride Month to you all, and I will see you in the next video.